Consider the extension Q adjoined root three, uh, cube root of two, excuse me, not root three, cube root of two of Q. Always remind yourself, this is the smallest subfield of the reals containing all the rationals and also containing the cube root of two. Cube root of two is a root of the irreducible polynomial X cubed minus two. This is irreducible over the rationals. It's not irreducible over the reals. It is irreducible over the rationals. You can apply Eisenstein's criterion with p equal to two to verify that. It's degree three. Therefore, we know that this is a three-dimensional vector space over the rationals and would have one cube root of two and cube root of two squared as a basis. Everything in here could be written as a plus b times cube root of two plus c times cube root of two squared as a, b, and c vary over the rationals. That's what that field extension is. By an anal argument analogous to example one, this is what I was hinting at, that automorphisms being doubly operation preserving permute roots of equations. We know if omega is a root of this equation and I apply phi to both sides an automorphism, we know such a thing maps zero to itself. We also know it's doubly operation preserving. So this is phi of omega cubed minus phi of two. And once again, automorphisms of field extensions of the rationals fix all the rationals. That's a two. And this is omega or phi of omega quantity cubed. So in other words, phi of omega quantity cubed minus two is zero. Phi of omega has got to be another root of that equation. However, it's a little funny in this one compared to the other example in that the other roots of this equation, this polynomial, are actually complex numbers that are not real. What are they? We'll find them, not yet. They're actually complex numbers. So if phi is a an element of the Galois group here, this has got to be a cube root of two. It's a subset of the real numbers. The cube root of two is the only real cube root of two. So phi actually have to map, has to map the cube root of two to itself. So the Galois group is trivial. It's a typo. The Galois group is trivial. It's just got one element, epsilon. Yes, there are other cube roots of two. What are they? Well, okay, probably the, the simplest way to explain what they are is to realize you could think of this as the difference of two cubes. And we know anytime we got the difference of two cubes, you can always factor it. A cubed minus B cubed is A minus B times A squared plus AB plus B squared. Doesn't matter what A and B are. In this case, A is X and B is two to the one third power. I can factor this as A minus B times, okay, A squared is X squared. A times B is two to the one third times X. B squared is two to the two thirds. So the other roots of X cubed minus two are gonna be roots of this thing, a quadratic. I can use the quadratic formula. Set that thing equal to zero. I mean, this is not a typical use of the quadratic formula, but it's certainly still valid. Negative two to the one third plus or minus square root of two to the one third squared is two to the two thirds, two thirds minus four times one times C is two to the two thirds over two times one. Quadratic formula is what I'm using. 
negative one half times two to the one third, where this, this represents the real cube root of two. Real cube root of two. I was implying all that all along. Plus or minus one half square root of negative three times two to the two thirds. That's going to be a multiple of i because it's negative square root, square root of a negative number. Multiple of i. What multiple of i? Uh, square root of two to the two thirds is two to the one third. Square root of negative three could be thought of as i times the square root of positive three. This is probably more commonly written with the two to the one third factored out. Write it like that. And this, look at this thing. Don't those numbers look special? Negative one half and the square root of three over two. That's nothing other than cosine of 120 degrees. Uh, two pi over three radians plus I times sine of two pi over three radians. 120 degrees. You can use trigonometry to, to represent this in a nice way. Those are the other two roots. And if you draw the, these in the complex plane, say here's the unit circle. This is the real axis, this is the imaginary axis. The three cube roots of two are two to the one third as a real number, which is one something, maybe right about there. And these two, this one is on the unit circle, right? Co squared plus sine squared equals one. I am multiplying it by two to the one third, giving me something off the unit circle, but the angle that the complex number makes with the positive real axis is 120 degrees. Might be a number right about there, where that's about 120, that's 120 degrees. And, oh, I forgot plus or minus. I could also do minus, negative one half minus square root of three over two, the imaginary part gets negated. It would have to be by symmetry be down here is the other one. And this angle could be thought of as negative 120 degrees if you like, or you could go all the way around the horn like this and think of it as a 240 degree angle. These three cube roots of two form an equilateral triangle where the vertices are the same distance to the origin. And that'll always be true. The cube root of any number, there's three cube roots of any number besides zero. And if you plot them in the complex plane, they'll form an equilateral triangle always. Isn't that cool? Anyway, that was an aside. It was an aside worth doing to emphasize that we can find the other roots of this. But they're not rational numbers. They're not re even real numbers. And since phi here is assumed to map this field to itself, the output has to be a real number that's not complex. It has to be a real number. It's got to be just the real cube root of two. This is a one element Galois group. Uh, but wait a minute. That's a degree three extension of that. Does this contradict the fundamental theorem of Galois theory? Where'd my tower of fields go? Can I not make something like this? The answer is no, you can't. Why not? 
Because if you look at the statement of the fundamental theorem of Galois theory, which is a very difficult theorem to understand, and we're not going to understand it completely, it goes over two pages. Uh, yikes. Well, first of all, your, your, your field has to have characteristic zero, which ours does. Secondly, or, or a finite field, there are, there are infinite fields that have a non-zero characteristic. We haven't talked about them, but if E is the splitting field for F or for some polynomial in Fx, okay, that's the key. E has got to be the splitting field over F for some polynomial. Q rejoin root cube root of two is even though it contains cube root of two, which is root of that thing, it's not a splitting field for that over the rationals because it doesn't contain the other roots. You can't completely factor it in there. Yes, it is a degree three extension. It's a three-dimensional vector space over the rationals, but it's not a splitting field for x cubed minus two. I'd have to adjoin these other two numbers, which would make it a subfield of the complex numbers, not the real numbers. Yeah, that's what I would have to do. Galois, the fundamental theorem of Galois theory does not apply to this example. I can't use it. <laughs> 